Well, Jillian, it's so fun to get to visit with you today. You have a, a TED Talk that has gone viral on YouTube. It has millions and millions of views. And the topic is change your closet, change your life. And so will you share with us the candle story? Because I think this is going to resonate with everyone. Basically, I was on a family vacation in Mexico and I had bought a beautiful candle. It was blue and in the shape of a sandcastle. And you know, when you're on vacation and it just it summarizes the trip. You're like, I'll bring this home as my perfect souvenir. So I get home and I decide, I'm like, I don't want to, I don't want to like this right away. I'm going to save it for a really special occasion because this candle feels so special to me. <laughs> so I tucked it away in the closet. And actually it was a couple years later that I'm like, you know what? Today's the day. Let's pull out the candle. So I go to the closet and I open the lid and my beautiful candle had turned into a blue pile of wax. It had melted in the closet. Yeah. I just was so struck by this because I thought I was doing the right thing. I thought yeah. I was saving this for the perfect occasion. And I thought I was actually going to make my experience better by waiting mm -hmm. for the right occasion. And I had missed out on the opportunity to enjoy my candle. And yeah. what this did was I started to think like, oh my goodness, what else am I missing out on by saving mm -hmm. it for a long time? Yeah. And yeah. I started to walk around my house and it was like, I have clothes in my closet with tags on that I bought with yeah. all the intention of using it. And just yeah. the time was never right. Or I thought, oh, I'll save this for something in the future. And then that event comes and I'm like, not today. It's not quite right. right. Um, I think like self-care items, we often mm -hmm. elevate the bubble bath or like the face mask or like that really nice lotion. And I realized that all of these items that I like thought I was kind of like honoring and serving well, I actually was missing out on because I thought that I had to wait for this special occasion. And so I came up with this tagline to try and remind myself of this occasion and of this new intentionality. And I like to say, don't let your candle melt in the closet. It's a reminder that you can actually miss out on things if you aren't yeah. intentional about using your stuff. It's not light your candle. It's things can go poorly if you're not intentional about enjoying your life and enjoying your belongings. Yeah. And I think that's so good. You know, and I know for us, we grew up, we didn't have lots of extra. And so I think this was very much yeah. my mentality growing up is that totally. you save the nice clothes for the special occasions. Um, yeah. You know, the nice stuff, like you don't use that every day. And in that time period, I actually think it was okay. I don't, you know, growing yeah. up, I don't remember a lot of stuff going bad or not getting to use it. Once in a while, there was like totally. the outfit you grew out of or whatever. And you're like, oh, yeah. I should have worn that. But yeah. I feel like we live in this time now where we have so much and if we save everything for another day 90 percent of the stuff in our house is actually getting saved for a different time uh, yes i totally i think one of the reasons that we save our stuff is because it was modeled to us by the generation above mm -hmm. us but let's yeah. put that in perspective they actually experienced scarcity and there was a yes. mindset of waste not want not um yeah. sunday best right like you had one nice outfit mm -hmm. that you wore on sunday and you kept it nice but now mm -hmm. I have 10 nice dresses and I wear none yeah. of them. And so you're right. kind of thinking like, where did we go wrong? Yeah. I have a closet filled with stuff, but I only seem to wear like 20%. So it's kind of our default setting to save things, yeah. but I think mm -hmm. it's possible to intentionally use things. Yeah, I think that's so good. And it's interesting too, if you look at the research, the longer we put off using something, the more special it becomes in our brain and the less likely we are to even use it. And so it's yes. like the specialness multiplies over time to the point where, like you said, like, oh, I couldn't possibly wear those now. And I just, yeah. I just got this new, like, um, cream colored sweater for fall. Yeah. And I, I put it on to record a video <laughs> the other day. And then um, I was going to go to a church thing at night, like a women's Bible study. And mm -hmm. I was like, oh, I should take off the sweater so I don't get it dirty or yes. get it wrinkly when I'm sitting in the yes. car, you know? And I'm like, I should protect the sweater. And I'm like, yes. Dawn, are we really still doing this? Like, <laughs> like really? And I had to tell totally. myself, no, leave on the sweater, wear yeah. the sweater, enjoy yeah. the sweater. And you know what? If it gets stained or too wrinkled or stretched out, then eventually you'll replace the sweater. But you would rather replace it because you wore it out it got worn out then because now it's been hanging in the closet and it doesn't fit or it's not the right style anymore and so then you just end up decluttering it you know so Jillian totally. how does your closet look different now that you have this mindset I find it really helpful to break this down I have kind of three categories for looking at my stuff and so the first one is the workhorse. So these are the items like your old faithful, your favorites, what you always reach for. I call those my workhorse. And <laughs> they're just my favorites. Like, you know, like you okay. put it on, you're like, this is the best. And my goal is to have 
80% of my closet be workhorses. Like I can reach nice. for them, they fit, they're com I'm confident in them, etc. And then you have the show pony. And this is kind of the idea like the show pony gets like brought out of the barn once a year, put back in the barn, kept safe. <laughs> and my show ponies are things that I'm kind of like, oh, this is really special. I don't want to waste it, but I really challenge myself to use it. Like my goal is to make most of my show ponies a workhorse. Um, so like for instance, this necklace, like it's not an everyday necklace, but I still try and like use it and bring it out. And then the third category is out to pasture. Yeah. And so this kind of connects with your idea of decluttering of it's these items that kind of clutter your way of looking at your closet and they distract mm -hmm. from your favorites, right? Like it's not a workhorse that you always yeah. reach for. It's not a show pony that you're challenging yourself to reach for. It's kind of these like odds and ends. And often I find that out to pasture usually falls into like it was a workhorse that I like wore and wore and wore and it's too tired now. Like it needs to yeah. go or mm -hmm. it's a show pony that I just need to come to terms with. I'll never wear it. You know, like mm -hmm. it, I bought yeah. it at a certain season of life. I love it, but it is not part of my life. And like someone else will use it more. And so yeah. when I look at my closet, I really want to have workhorses. Like I want to like yeah. open it and be like, these are all options. I could, I could wear yes. anything here. And so yes. I think then to like create a closet like this, you have to shop differently because now I shop for workhorses. I don't shop for show ponies. And I used to look for a lot of show ponies. Yeah. And I hear that from a lot of women. And so when you're now being so careful with selecting this and make sure, making sure the pieces in your closet are all workhorses or pieces that fit, that you feel good in, yeah. do you feel like now you can get by with a much smaller wardrobe? Absolutely. Because I think I have a, a way higher standard for what I bring into my wardrobe. And I think, I, and I think that starts in the store. Like, I think I'm asking myself, you know, will I wear this twice in this week? Like, I'm not standing in the store being like, okay, can I buy this dress and save it for Christmas party? Like, I'm like, where yeah. am I wearing this this week? Will I cut the tags off as soon as I get home? Am I going to be like pulling at it, etc.? And yes, I think then having those high standards, yeah. I think it just helps me to create a smaller wardrobe of items that I really enjoy. And you realize like, if you wanna wear your items multiple times a month, you actually can't have that many because then you have too, no. too many options and you're not wearing them that often, right? It's and true, right? Like the season goes by and you're like, I wore this dress twice. How is that yeah. possible? But it's because when you have 10 dresses to choose from, it's really hard to wear them all. Absolutely. And I love to, I found that if I, if I have this criteria, like, Everything in my closet has to be something that fits and that I enjoy wearing, right? Like yeah. I'm not tugging at it. I'm not having to adjust anything. And then knowing, okay, because I'm so selective now, I can get by with much fewer items. Yeah. I think that also makes it easier that if we're not the size or the shape or the whatever mm -hmm. that we want to be right now, mm -hmm. it's still okay to buy clothes at this size. I'm not saying I'm going to be this size forever. Totally. I'm simply saying for the next three to four months, I'm going to have at least a handful of pieces that fit and then I feel good in. And then after that, I can reevaluate if I lose the weight or gain yeah. the weight or whatever. Yeah. Um, then that next set of time, I will, I will adjust for that. But right mm -hmm. here today for this coming mm -hmm. season, I deserve to have things that I feel good and that I fit into. Right. Yeah. Like, so instead yeah. of buying something, you're like, oh, I'm going to use it twice. It doesn't really fit. I guess it's okay. I'll save it for next time. You're like buying stuff that fits, wearing the heck out of it. And then when it doesn't work yeah. anymore, it can move on. Like I have a pair of jeans like that mm -hmm. where I was like, okay, everything's getting snug. I need something I'm comfortable in. And I wore them just every day because you're like, well, I have them. Let's do this. Yeah. And I think the the unsung hero of this, if, if you will do this, if you'll pare down your closet, if everything, when you open your closet doors is an option yeah. for something that you have to wear today, I think uh, you don't even realize how much mental energy we put oh, into our clothing yes. choices in the morning yes. and how much easier it is and what a better way it is to start your day when you are putting on something that you feel good in and is oh, comfortable. Yeah. I, I feel like I go back and forth where I'm like, do clothes really make a difference? And then I'm like, oh my goodness, yes. And just yeah. feeling confident and comfortable, there's just such a like relief and a confidence to like, I can open my closet and I can pick anything and it will look good and it won't make me feel bad about my body. And yeah, yeah there's just so much to that. Yeah, I love that. And let's clarify too, Jillian, I, I think what you're saying too, I don't think it means that we necessarily even have to spend a lot more money because in the past, you know, I would buy 
you know, everything came from the Target clearance rack, pretty right. much. Yes. But I would buy three or four shirts <laughs> that don't actually fit, that I only wear a couple times. Um, and if I would have used that same money to buy one piece that yeah. I really enjoyed wearing and that fit really well. So if women are listening, they're like, I'm feeling inspired. I, I understand what you're saying. What is the best way to get started? Okay, so I, I love tactics and strategies and stuff. So I have this um, idea called one and only one. And so oftentimes we'll have like categories of things. So for instance, you'll have a bunch of candles to use or a bunch of skincare products or a bunch of hair products. And you kind of get overwhelmed with even just like the choice of where do I start? Which one do I use? I don't, there's like nicer ones, less nice ones. So what I do is I pull out one from that category. I put everything out of sight. You know, you talk about a quarantine bin, but like it can just be storage yeah. or whatever. And I'm yeah. like, I'm using this item. So I did this with my hair products. I somehow came up with like five hair products. And I was like, this is too much. Like we need to like pare down yeah. and use them up. And I just all, I had one out. That was my option to use when I was using my hair, doing my hair. And it made such a difference. So if you kind of find mm -hmm. that you have a bunch of stuff to use, that can be yeah. really overwhelming. Just put out one item, one item that you're always going to use. I love that. Okay. Another yeah. tactic I use is in plain sight. So for instance, I had this kitchen spray for like wiping down counters. My friend gave it to me. It was really nice. I loved it, but I found it was under my sink and I honestly forgot about it, like out of sight, out of mind. So I put it on my counter and I gave myself permission every time you're wiping down the counters, you can use this. And it made such a difference because oftentimes these yeah. nice items kind of get like pushed away. It makes it that it's more of an option for your, when you go to use it versus having to like dig yeah. to use the nice item. Another one's jewelry. Like a lot of women will be like, I have tons of jewelry. And I'm like, okay, where is it? And they're like in a box, it's filled with dust at the back of my closet. And I'm like, I'm not surprised right. we're not using this. Pull out the yeah. necklace you always want to yeah. wear, put it in plain sight, reach for it every day of the week. I love to dress things down. So for instance, we often have like nice dresses or like nice heels that were like, I don't have the right occasion to wear it. So for instance, I mm -hmm. um, was a bridesmaid in my friend's wedding this summer and it wasn't a classic bridesmaid dress, but I, I, the first time I wore it was at a wedding. So automatically I think like, this is special. I can only wear this dress at mm -hmm. weddings. And I was like, no, right. not happening. So the next week I wore it to work. And what I did was I paired it with some casual sandals. I put on a scarf, I put on a cardigan and I kind of disguised this nice dress as office appropriate. And I think this is a really nice way to kind of bridge to using your stuff. Okay, I have one more. Totally. Remove barriers. So um, oftentimes I think what like holds us back is that there's like little signals to ourselves that this thing is still special and we shouldn't use it. So one is mm -hmm. dry cleaning bags, like stuff still in the dry cleaner. We're like, oh, that's a special item. Like it takes a lot to clean it, don't yeah. use it. Tags, yeah. I think right. like, Having the, like when you go to use something and it still has the tags on, it's kind of like a little pause for you to be like, uh, I don't know, is this really worth cutting them right. off? And I think even yeah. using things really quickly for the first time. So like lighting the candle, even if it's for five minutes, once that wick is lit, all of a sudden it becomes yeah. an opportunity or like a really nice so notebook. Um, you know, you're like, yeah. I don't know, is like today's to-do list worthy of this like fresh clean notebook, right? <laughs> just in the first page, because you all of a sudden right. remove this barrier for your brain being like, today's not worthy of like opening this fresh notebook. Whereas if it's already written in, you're yeah. like, hmm, it's kind of already been sullied. I think I can use it. So removing the barriers yeah. really helps. So those are just a few tactics I find that- Those are great. Break it down. Yeah. And I love to, you know, like even what you're saying about like wear the dress, dress it down. You'll also decide then too, if you still really like the dress, like, do you want to continue to do that? Or do you wear it to work? And then you're like, you know, it actually didn't fit as good as I remembered, or yeah. it wasn't as comfortable to sit in for, a, you know, this amount of time. And so now I feel very confident decluttering it or donating it and letting it go yes. because it's not going to be a workhorse or a staple yes. in my, you know, and it's yeah. like, okay, I needed to do that. Yeah. Today. I needed to wear it today. And now I know, but we can't know until we use it. Right. And totally. so it could just continue to hang there otherwise. So yeah. And like, and I call I, that a I win. That. Like if you discover that something needs to be out yes. of pasture, like, heck yeah. Like yes. another thing that won't distract me from what I truly love. It's a win to right. learn what works and what doesn't. And actually that's another thing. I have another tactic called like, what's the problem? when you'll go to use something and you're kind of like, huh, I never reach for this. And I'm like, but why? Like, is there something wrong with it that makes yeah. you not reach for yes. it? And I have multiple, like I had a bracelet that I love that was like really hard to get on on my own. Like I could not mm -hmm. get it on on my own. Yep. And I was like, that's the problem. That's the only reason I don't use it. Took it to the jeweler, yeah. got an extension. I wear it all the time. 
you know? So it's like, okay, yeah. by using your stuff, you kind of get curious about how to make it work for you. Yeah. That's so good. Well, Jillian, it's so fun to get to visit with you today. If people want to connect with you, um, how can they find you? Yeah. Okay. So, um, first, if you want to hear more, I think my TEDx talk is change your closet, change your life. You can find it on YouTube or just type in Jillian Dunn. Yeah. We'll link to it. For awesome. Sure. Yeah. And then I have a blog where I love to share tips and tricks and my personal experience with kind of expanding using my stuff. And that is jilliandunn.ca so my full name .ca and then i'm also on instagram and this one is at jilly dunn so g i l l i e dunn um you can find me on there so i'd love to connect with people i love spreading awesome. the word about this yeah and it's so fun i know like i like curate my like instagram feed very carefully with people that don't sell me stuff and are yes. encouraging me to get rid of stuff. So you would be a great addition <laughs> to that as well. Well, Jillian, thank you so much for visiting with us today.